in my research of trying to figure out what was going on with my own brain, because mm. my brain in general, I'm 54. I've been postmenopausal for about a year and a half now. And the way that I would, so I should have thrown myself a party. I yes. didn't think about that. I was too busy writing books. So, so, but what I, the way I can describe it is that all of a sudden my brain felt raw. I could not handle the stress that I used to be able to handle. I couldn't put in the work day that I used to be able to put in. I sleep, of course, became difficult. Anxiety and depression showed up for no reason. There was nothing that I could point of my finger at. So after a, you know, a few, like a year or so of that, I realized that something was shifting. And so, of course, I, I, you know, I'm the one who loves to read the research that, that people like you do. And I landed upon this really interesting study that talked about how estrogen, progesterone, and, and mainly those two, that they actually also stimulate a whole set of neurotransmitters. Yes. So with estrogen, estradiol specifically, stimulating dopamine and serotonin, acetylcholine, mm -hmm. glutamate, GABA, BDNF. And so I started looking at this like, oh, it's like a shedding of a neurochemical armor. It's like there mm -hmm. is this neurochemical armor that has protected us from our stressors mm -hmm. and has given us this superpower to be able to multitask and connect with other humans. It's coming down. And as it comes down, there we can either curse it or we can say there's an opportunity here to do exactly what you're saying. If we, how about we, it's time we handle our traumas. How about we look at a deeper, look at our relationships through a deeper lens and what relationships need to stay and maybe what relationships need to go. Maybe we need to look at what our career path or what's coming down in the next, you know, as Jane Fonda calls it, our third act. Yeah. Like it's an opportunity because this neurochemical armor comes down and then there's a rebirth of something new. Would you would you say clinically, like, or from a research lens, do you agree with this neurochemical armor theory? I I love it, and I think you're coming up with like the best analogies. <laughs> it's just <laughs> like you. incredible, these pearls of wisdom. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what, what estradiol does primarily, it's a it's actually it's a growth hormone in many ways. Mm. You know, it was so it was discovered in the 1930s by scientists that were studying reproduction and fertility. And so immediately it was done, you know, it was dubbed as a sex hormone. And we've been stuck yep. with this definition forever. But in reality, in 1996, in the 1990s, brain scientists realized that the same hormones that are involved in having children or not having children are also just as equally important for the functioning of our minds and their brains. Mm -hmm. And estradiol mm -hmm. in particular is the master regulator of women's brains because okay. it's a little bit, so estradiol is to the brain what fuel is to an engine or to a car. Mm -hmm. yep. If you look at neurons where the estrogen receptors are, estradiol just flows right in, it hits the receptors and that activates a whole cascade, the cellular event where energy production is improved. Okay. So estradiol pushes your neurons to make energy and work right. faster and harder. So right. that will mean that you have more serotonin, you have more dopamine, you have more glutamine glutamate conversion, you have all these beautiful things happening inside your brain. And then as estradiol recedes, we lose this activation effect. And the brain mm -hmm. is to recalibrate and start burning other sources of energy instead of okay. glucose or in combination with glucose to support cellular energy. So this, this is a big sh shock to the system in many ways. And, it's, and it puts women at risk for suffering more from the effects of stress. Yeah. There's a lot less yes. resilience to stress. We just yeah. published this study that I'm very proud of, where we show that cortisol levels, right, where mm -hmm. cortisol in, in serum is a marker for chronic stress, mm -hmm. predict the amount of cellular Alzheimer's plaques in the brain mm -hmm. are correlated with lower gray matter density in the brain and lower okay. brain energy levels, especially in women 
and especially in women who are postmenopausal. So it's that really important to, to keep that in mind, also in part because stress release, a really stress reduction should really become part of the menopausal toolkit. Yes. I would say. Uh, so many uh, yes. Mm. Okay. So, and that I only discovered by uh, powering through my perimenopausal years mm. And really, I mean, I ate well, I, I changed my exercise, I tried to sleep when I could, like I repaired my microbiome, I detoxed in my 40s. The one thing I could not get a hold of was the, I call it the patriarchal pace, that pace mm -hmm. of production where you're like, keep going, keep going, you know, you're, you're having to do so much and so yeah. stress stayed high. Yeah. And it hasn't been until recently when I really just put my foot down and said, okay, now I'm going to handle stress, that I all of a sudden felt like my brain started to come back online. Yeah. And I think that is not emphasized enough is how cortisol and chronic cortisol mm -hmm. is really, before we even think of lathering ourselves with all the creams or putting patches on, we have to think about what, how are we going to manage stress? Yeah, because stress, I mean, in the end, that really sinks your hormones as well, right? So yes, sex exactly. hormones and stress hormones are produced yes. at the same time from a common yes. precursor that's called pregnenolone. And so the body yes. needs to make more cortisol it will take the pregnenolone away from the estrogen. Yeah. And so more yeah. cortisol, less estrogen. So I think it's really important to, to balance the two. And to your point before, there's research, especially from Europe and Asia, showing that generally, once you're past menopause by about six years or more, the reason an increase in life contentment and there's a renewed mm. sense of energy and possibilities and it's a good time for many women to really enjoy their lives a lot more. Yes. And that, yeah. And that seems to be statistically significant. And you know, the anthropologist, Dr. Margaret Mead, she used to call, mm -hmm. she used to talk about the menopausal zest. Once you're done Ooh. with menopause, there's this renewed interest in life and you feel like you have a new, you know, you just, there's a different spark in your eye and you, you have a different yeah. way to approach life and there's so much to look forward to. And I know that okay. this is not universal. I know that many women just suffer throughout menopause and beyond, but I think it's also important to realize that this is not universal and mm -hmm. that actually more women the not tend to report an increase in life contentment once they're a little bit older. So I think this yeah. is something to look forward to and to really yes. set your mind towards. You know, you want to set the tone for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I think it, there's power. Our minds are powerful and there's power in our choices. And I think mindset also plays an yeah. important role that we don't talk about that much.